Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I am here to talk about my favorite historical fantasies that I read in 2022. I know it's late in 2023 to be still doing these, but I'm not going to get into that. You guys know how it goes. Um, yeah, let's just talk about the books. I have seven that I'm going to be talking about today, which I am really excited about. Um, I read so much fantastic fantasy this year that I realized I needed to split it up. <laughs> um, so these are all going to be like historical or kind of historical flavored fantasies, um, and quite a few of these are indie published, which definitely makes sense because I've been reading a lot of indie published fantasy lately and finding some real fantastic books there. So um, let's just jump into it. Um, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up, although of course I enjoy all of these. And number seven on my list is one that I do actually own, I just don't have it with me right now, um, but that is My Plain Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. Um, this is the second book in the Lady Janies series, which are like a series that is not sequential. They're just kind of like a similar concept. Basically, these three authors take women from history or literature um, who deserved better and they give it to them. So I love that concept. Um, and I finally read another book in the series last year. Um, I read it as part of my Reading Jane Eyre retelling slog, so I will link that below if you want a lot more in-depth thoughts. Um, but yeah, this is a kind of paranormal historical fantasy and I obviously really enjoyed it. Um, I can see why this would be polarizing for people. Um, the humor is very specific, the tone is kind of weird, but I really enjoyed it. I really loved our main characters. I personally really liked the changes it made to the Jane Eyre story and the way that it played with that. Um, you guys will know that I am not a fan <laughs> of Jane Eyre, so um, in that way this book really worked for me. And I found it like surprisingly poignant in the way that it dealt with grief and death and moving on um, because there are like ghosts or spirits in this in this book and um, some people can see them and communicate with them. Um, so even though there's a lot of like fun and humor and kind of hijinks, um, there are also some kind of more serious underlying ideas and I really liked how it dealt with them. Um, next on my list, I just kind of have like a whole series I want to talk about, and that is The Extraordinary Series by Melissa McShane. Um, this is Beguiling Birthright, which is the most recent book I read in the series. I didn't read all of these in um, 2022, but I did read this latest book last year. Actually, a few of them I read last year. And even though every book in this series has not been a favorite for me, as a whole, this is definitely one of my favorite series that I'm reading right now. Um, like, it's just so smart and interesting. It's set during the Napoleonic War, and there are these people who have abilities. Um, not everybody has these abilities, but you can have, like, different kinds of, um, of magical powers and things. And then there are some very rare people who are extraordinaries, which means that they have, you know, extra abilities and they're really powerful with them. Um, and our main characters of all of these books are different characters who have that, um, who are extraordinaries in different abilities. And um, so it's a companion series, and there's always a lot of really great character work, and there's also a romantic element in all of these. And I just really love the way Melissa McShane writes. Um, the fact that this is a, like, kind of war-adjacent series and I'm still so engaged I think is pretty impressive because in general that's not something I care for um, but I love the way that she writes her characters I love the way she writes the story I feel like she does a really good job of balancing all the different elements of her books um, so like the characters and the plot and the relationships and the history and everything um, and even though there have been a couple places where I think she could have gone farther with the social commentary, like the third book in particular, I wasn't a big fan of how that was handled. Overall, I feel like she is using um, this historical fantasy series to talk about some really interesting things and to look at how maybe some things could have been different um, if magic was a factor, but also maybe how some things would be similar. Um, so I've just really been enjoying this series and I put it in this slot even though it's like multiple books. Um, next I have another kind of stand-in for a whole series, um, and that is Tea and Sympathetic Magic by Tansy Rayner Roberts. Um, this is a very tiny novella. This whole series is very short novellas. And if I'm remembering correctly, I think I actually read books one, two, and three last year. Um, but I definitely read some of the books last year and I obviously loved them. This is a very cozy and like humorous um, fantasy series. So like The Extraordinaries, there is like some humor and some lightness, but it's overall the tone is not like it's not like a, a comedy, you know? Um, whereas with this series, I feel like that is much more the case. There are some moments that are, you know, darker, like where we're dealing with some of the implications of these, these like magical abilities and things. But in general, it's a fantasy of manners with a lot of humor, um, a really great romance that I really enjoyed, some really great characters. The setting is like very, very loosely based on historical England, but this is just like 
mostly fantasy with a splash of historical. So it's definitely more on like the fantasy side of the spectrum. Um, and I've just been really enjoying it. It's a ton of fun. And it's something that I've, that I found like this series or I started reading this series right when I needed it. Um, it's just a great little cozy pick me up. Then I think we're at number four. Um, for a very different tone, I have Dreamer's Pool by Juliet Merlier. This is the first book in the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy. And this is probably one of the biggest surprises I had last year. Um, Cause I have read things by Juliet Merlier before and most of them I have really enjoyed. But uh, I did not expect this book to be to be such a favorite and to like affect me so much. Um, so this is a kind of like, it is historical fantasy, obviously, that's why it's on this list. But there's also a pretty strong mystery component. Um, and we're following two main characters, Blackthorn and Grimm. Um, Blackthorn is a healer who very reluctantly ends up settling in this village to like basically take care of the, um, or not, I guess not village, I guess it's a city, uh, to take care of the people who need her help. And she's reluctant, but she has to do it because of uh, this like series of like magical commands that have been placed on her. Um, and as we go throughout the book, we learn more about what happened to her. Um, at the beginning of the story, she actually is in prison going to be executed when one of the Fae appears to her and gives her this magical bargain. She really doesn't want to do it, but she also, like she wants to live. So she takes the deal. Um, and then our other protagonist is Grimm, who he also is has been in the prison with Blackthorn and we are learning a little bit more about him as well. Um, and so the two of them are very reluctant allies and also very reluctant to take on these new positions in the community. Um, and then they end up getting tangled up in the mystery element, which relates to the prince of this area. Um, and he is like really in love with the woman that he is has been arranged to marry. Um, he feels very lucky for this. They've been exchanging letters and it seems like they're going to really love each other. And then she gets there and she seems totally different from the person he knew and he thinks something weird is going on and no one else seems to believe him but eventually he crosses paths with Blackthorn and Grimm and maybe they do believe him. Um, yeah, I just, I think this is such an interesting book. It's kind of a retelling, although that's not the main part of the story. This is definitely a very like quiet and character focused story, which Juliet Merlier's books tend to be. Um, it might be worth knowing that you don't actually have all these characters like meet each other and start working together on the same thing until about halfway through the book. Um, so just keep that in mind. But I feel like the payoff was so, so good. Um, and it took me a little while to get invested or to warm up to our two main characters, because even though it's very understandable why they are the way they are, it still can be a little hard to like get to know them. But there was a part about like a third of the way through the book, maybe, where like I had been gradually liking them more anyway, but there's like a pivotal scene um, and especially Blackthorn's part in that just made me love her. So um, I ended up really enjoying the characters. Um, but the thing that I was most blown away by is the way that this book looks at violence against women and the way it handles these really, really difficult topics with so much compassion and so much thoughtfulness and nuance. Um, I like this book is not like old or anything, but it was published in 2014 and there are books coming out like this year or like last year that I think d don't do it as well as this book does. And just like the kind of attention to detail and the way that this book just focuses so much on like the dignity of people and I just, I found that absolutely beautiful. Um, obviously there are big content warnings for this one. I will put all the content warnings for the books I talk about in the description. Um, but I feel like the way it handled those topics was just really, really well done. And that was one of the things that really, like I was enjoying the book anyway, but the way that that specifically was handled really elevated this book to a five stars for me. I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. And as I said, I also was really enjoying like the story and the characters. Um, the retelling aspect is very interesting. And one thing I think is cool about this book is that even if you kind of suspect where some things are going, um, it doesn't, like I feel like your enjoyment of the story doesn't depend on you being surprised, which is always nice. So yeah, just, I need to continue the series, but I really, really loved that one. Okay guys, we are into the top three. Uh, number three, I have Revolutionary by Colleen Cowley. And this is another kind of stand-in for the whole trilogy, but I think I only read this last book last year. Um, but this is in the Clandestine Magic trilogy. And this is like technically not a historical fantasy, but that's how I'm categorizing it because it really reads re like one. I think technically this would be considered like an alternate contemporary fantasy um, because it reads like a fantasy set in like early 1900s America. Um, but actually what it is, is it's set 
around our current day, but in an alternate version of history where magic is real and supposedly only men can use it, and that has been used as an excuse to not give women the right to vote and to basically um, perpetuate other parts of the patriarchy. So we are following our two main characters, Peter Blackwell and Beatrice Harper, and they have very good reasons for hating each other and not trusting each other. He is a wizard and she is a member of this group that is trying to basically limit wizards' power and keep them out of politics. They think that they have too much control over the country, but she ends up having to go work for Peter because of various plot reasons. And I'm not gonna get into like all the details, but every time I talk about these books I feel like I have to preface by being like, Peter does some really bad things in service of doing really good things, which is not to excuse what he does, but I think that the author does a really great job of making you understand like why he would make the choices he does. Like he knows what he's doing isn't okay, but if he doesn't do it, he would like his choices would lead to the death of many people. Um, and so he's not willing to do that. And I just think the way like, his character arc, I think is so good. Um, I also really love Beatrix as a main character. I love both of them like separately and together. I think their relationship development is fantastic and it kept me engaged throughout the whole trilogy. And you guys know that I'm usually like, I usually get bored <laughs> after the couple kind of like, I don't know, gets together or admits that they like each other. Um, and also, this is a really fantastic example of a hate to love romance that is done really well. Because both characters have very understandable reasons for hating the other person or not trusting them, and it takes a long time for them to move past that. And it's not easy, and I feel like just, I, I feel like even if you are not a hate to love like fan, I feel like you might still get on with this one just because I think the development is so good. Um, although, as I said, I can totally see why other readers would maybe not like Peter as a main character or they wouldn't find um, his character development convincing. Um, but yeah, I love our characters and relationships. I think the setting is so interesting. I really, really love Colleen Cowley's writing style. It's the kind of writing where like you don't, I don't like stop and think about like, wow, that was such a beautiful quote or something. Um, so I know that some people might not like that, but I just think she's fantastic at dialogue, at characterization, at relationships, at, again, like balancing all these different story elements, like the plot and the characters and all of that. Um, and I read her books so quickly. Um, I just think she's a really talented writer. I've been loving this whole series. And yeah, definitely on my list of favorite historical fantasies, even though technically it's not. <laughs> um, number two, I have Long Shadow by Olivia Atwater. It's a little misleading that I'm holding up this copy because I actually read the um, indie published version for the first time last year. Um, I'm not counting rereads in any of these favorites lists, otherwise you know that Half a Soul and 10,000 Stitches would definitely be on this list. But I did read Long Shadow for the first time last year and I absolutely loved it. Um, you guys know that like the Half a Soul series is one of my all-time favorites. Um, I still need to reread this book so that I can do like a whole series review, but uh, I love Olivia Atwater. I love the way she writes. I love her themes. I love that her books are like they are romantic and they can be cozy and warm, but they also deal with really difficult ideas. Um, like the first two books especially deal a lot with the power of anger and the necessity of anger and especially the anger of women in a way that I just love. I really love the take on um, the Fae in these stories. Um, this third one deals a lot with grief and with that messiness and I just... Ugh. I love it so much. I love these characters. Um, this one has a sapphic romance that I thought was really beautifully developed. Um, and if you remember my wrap up where I talked about this book, I'll link that if you want more thoughts. I had some issues with the ending, but the further I am from the book, the more I think that I see what the author was doing. And I just like, I personally would have liked it to be done in a little bit of a different way, but I still think there's like a lot of things I still love about the ending. There were just like a couple pieces that didn't quite click for me, but I think that's more like personal preference than anything else or like my personal like reactions to it. Um, but yeah, this is a fitting end to the series. I love it so much. Olivia Atwater, just easily a favorite author for me. And then finally, number one, I don't think is going to surprise people. Probably not. Um, and that is The Beautiful Ones by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Like I said in my wrap-up, everyone who told me I would love this book was 100% correct. <laughs> I loved this so, so much. Um, shout out to my friend Yvette from Book Cave who gifted this to me, um, and I've had multiple people like recommend it to me specifically, and again, you were all correct. Um, I actually have a spoiler-free um, review that I will link below, or maybe it's a reasons to read video where I talk a little bit more about this one, but I loved it. <laughs> I loved it so much. Sylvia Muno Garcia is one of my favorite authors. I think she is so just talented. Her writing style is so like smooth and clean and 
again, I, I guess I'm seeing a pattern here of like writing styles I enjoy. I feel like she balances the elements of her stories really beautifully, like the characters and the relationships and like the atmosphere and the setting. I just love, um, I really, really loved our three main characters. Basically the premise of this one, we have Nina, Hector, and Valerie. Um, Hector is an entertainer who has come to, um, what's the name, Lo Sale, uh, for the season. Nina is there and she is expected to make a good match, to, you know, to be charming and beautiful and she's not really, she's not very polished but in the eyes of society. Um, and then our other main character is Valerie who is Nina's cousin and she and Hector have a history together and when Hector arrives um, he starts paying attention to Nina as a way to kind of get closer to Valerie but then people's feelings get involved and things get messy and like I just I love this book so much like I just love the relationships I love the characters I think Sylvia Manor Garcia is one of the best authors I have ever read for writing characters that you don't like but you don't hate reading their perspective I know I've said this multiple times before but like I really do think it's a special talent to write antagonists or to write unpleasant characters that you can understand and that you don't like get frustrated every time you come across a point of view chapter from them you know because like there are plenty of villains or antagonists where it's like I do understand where you're coming from and why you are the way you are but I hate every time I have to read from your perspective and Silvermoon Garcia just doesn't do that like I love I love the way she writes characters I loved this book and it is number one on my favorite historical fantasy list um so yeah those are my favorite historical fantasies that I read in 2022 um not necessarily that came out that year but I read them and let me know if you have read any of these what you thought of them or if you're going to pick them up let me know a historical fantasy that you love if that is something that you pick up um I, it's one of my favorite like genre combinations so I read a lot of really wonderful ones last year thank you guys so much for watching I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!